You're watching. You're watching. You're watching. You're watching. West Hartford Community, community television. television. Community television. For the community. For the community. By the community. And it's a wrap. Yes. <laughs> but you see the rock? That... Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be speaking about a world-class concert that's going to be taking place in Hartford. World-class because the composer is none other than Philip Glass, three-time nominated for an Oscar, the Chiara Quintet, the House Quintet at the Metropolitan, plus Paul Barnes, internationally renowned musician, very well known for his translation of Franz Liszt, and plus there's much more. Sitting with me, ready to talk about this concert, are Dr. Richard Freund, the director of the Maurice Greenberg Center for Judaic Studies, and also Jack Pott, the director of the music program at Asylum Hill Congregational Church. Why is this happening in Hartford? How did you assemble this team? It makes no sense. It's a miracle. <laughs> it's a miracle. No, really. It, it's one of those kinds of things that uh, uh, happened uh, by happenstance. I've been excavating the Church of the Annunciation in Nazareth in Israel for the past 15 years. And uh, my donor is a woman who lives in Naples, Florida, Margie Scribanti. And one day at lunch, a couple of years ago, she says, you know, I have a piano professor that is composing with Philip Glass an original piece. That would be Paul Barnes. Paul Barnes, who is the Scribanti professor of piano, who is composing with Paul Barnes a piece on the Annunciation. I said, Margie, that's amazing. That's a miracle. That's a coincidence of epic proportion that the Scribanti excavations are excavating the Church of the Annunciation and Paul Barnes, the Scribanti professor piano, is composing with Philip Glass, the Annunciation. So that's a coincidence. That's a coincidence. I said, we must have it in Hartford. So how, but Paul Barnes is in University Nebraska. in Nebraska, and you are in Hartford. That's right. And uh, Philip Glass is, is in New York. Is in New York. Yeah. So, so I, I went to Nebraska. And I, I <laughs> said to Barnes, we have to have it in Hartford. Because in Hartford, I will put together a, a photo exhibit. We'll show all the different things we've discovered on the Annunciation. We'll have the Annunciation music. We'll have the Annunciation photos. It'll be a great event. And he says, that's a great idea. He liked it. He loved the idea. <laughs> so he sold it to Glass. And then we had to find the right place. So how does Asylum Hill Congregational Church fit into this? The premier church in, in Hartford. It's, uh, it, uh, Asylum Hill has had a wonderful history of uh, presenting large scale works of music in the city uh, for decades. Um, and so when, uh, when Richard approached about a year ago... Uh, this happened a year ago? A year ago. Okay. Yes. Uh, Richard and Steve Metcalf came and met with me at the church. And Steve Metcalf is the director of the President's College. President's College. Okay. And asked, we have this idea. Um, it involves art. It involves music. It involves multi-faith. Are you interested? And without hesitating, I said, absolutely. So how come everybody said yes right away? Most people say, I'll think about it. I'll get back to you. This is such a uh, seminal event in history. This is the, the, the story of the Annunciation of the birth of Jesus. Jesus the Jew, born in a Jewish town called Nazareth. Jewish and Christian and later Islamic idea of Mary of Nazareth. So, I mean, the Annunciation is one of these great moments in history. And the fact that 
uh, a Jewish professor from Hartford, and my colleague, by the be, way, that would that be you. Me, and then a Muslim but woman no, archaeologist, no, Maha Daraushu, who's my no, co-director, no, 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 no. and the church, the Greek Orthodox no, 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 no. Church of the Annunciation, opening its, its, its home, really, to us to excavate. Really, I mean, it was an ecumenical event, and the fact that we now have an ecumenical event to parallel it in the music is really fantastic. So, Jack, did you have to sell this concept to your board? It, it, it did not take a lot of selling. One of the things that we like to promote and pride ourselves in at the church is common ground. So in a time when there are many different things that can divide people, uh, it's, it's much better to look for common ground. And this was more common ground than could even be imagined. Uh, so it was not a hard sell to say, this is coming here. They want to do it here. I agree with them. Are you okay with this? Yes. And the answer was yes. What about the Philip Glass piece? I mean, Philip Glass is an international name. I mean, yes. I mentioned originally that he, that he was nominated for three Oscars. But... I didn't mention that he's collaborated with Leonard Cohn, with Allen Ginsberg, with David Bowie, and that's just a few. How does, how is he doing this? Like, why did he decide to do this? Paul Barnes has been collaborating with Philip Glass over the past uh, two decades. I mean, they have a relationship, uh, but the interesting thing is that this is not going to be typical Philip Glass. In this case, Philip Glass and Paul Barnes collaborated on something that Paul Barnes brings to the table, not only his piano ability, he's also the chanter for the Greek Orthodox Church uh, in Lincoln, Nebraska. And he has one of these tremendous voices. So you have a pianist who's also able to do chanting. So Philip Glass has incorporated aspects of the Greek Orthodox chant into a Philip Glass work. I mean, I mean, you couldn't you couldn't script something so is like that, that. That has to be the coincidence. Well, that that uh, Barnes is a is a Byzantine is a, is also a chanter. chanter. Yeah, that's a coincidence. Yeah. yeah. Now, what about the music, Jack? Um, you have obviously, I assume that you've already heard the music. Uh, well, uh, everything except what's going to be premiered. That's yes. Right. Everything exce <laughs> except. Oh what's my it. God. Oh my. Um, so we, the, all the other music was, uh, especially the choral music, was chosen to associate with this idea of sacred and the Annunciation. Uh, the program actually begins with a, probably the most well-known late 20th century choral setting of the Ave Maria text, the, the Hail Mary Annunciation text. And that so is, that's the one that everybody knows. Right. right. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with the Ave Maria. We're doing a setting to start the concert by Franz Bibel, which was written in 1964. Uh, he wrote it for male chorus, and it really did not gain notoriety until Bibel, who was a composer in Bavaria, invited American choirs to come and sing on Bavarian radio. He happened to invite the Cornell Men's Glee Club in 1977. Mm -hmm. They heard the piece, fell in love with it, brought it back to the United States, and then it gained immense notoriety when the preeminent male chorus group Chanticleer uh, recorded it. Uh, and then Bebel actually set it for women's chorus, for mixed chorus. So is this concert going to be an esoteric concert or is it going to be something that everyone can uh, be part of? I think this is going to be a feast for the listeners' ears. Philip Glass's music is very consonant harmony. Uh, what in, does that mean, consonant um, harmony? Harmonies that make sense and are pleasing to the ear, as opposed to dissonant harmony, clashing harmonies. Um, he's obviously very well known Give us for, a little lesson here. This dissonant harmony, would that be like Mahler? Would Mahler be dissonant? Yes. Uh, well, uh, certain aspects, but Schoenberg, Schoenberg, yes, Stravinsky, okay. yes, Berg, yeah. yes. Um, what do we know by Philip Glass that everybody would know? Besides, I mean, he wrote the musical score for the Hours. Mm -hmm. I recall that. Mm -hmm. But is there something that people would know? Well, something I think that you can find pretty readily if you search uh, like on YouTube for Philip Glass is, um, and Paul Barnes has a few videos of these, is his uh, piano transcription of a piece called Akhenaten, 
which is just stunningly beautiful and is a great representation of this repetitious pattern that uh, that glass composes in he finds a sound that he likes and then just keeps going with it and i think that repetitious meditative quality lends itself extremely well to the chant based melody right. that this new piano quintet is is based well, that's upon i was just about to ask as you talked about the fact that paul barnes was a chanter uh, with uh, the byzantine with Byzantine. Right, with the Greek Orthodox Church of, of Lincoln, Nebraska. Right. Mm -hmm. So is that going to be amalgamated? Yes. Is there... So the, 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 the melodies that Glass has written within this new piece are based on the hymn of the Annunciation from the Byzantine chant. So uh, I, I think it's a, it's a wonderful musical marriage uh, and those uh, Philip Glass's style and the chant style, I think, fit together perfectly. Now what about, you were talking right at the beginning, you mentioned that you've been doing this work, uh, archeological work, right. uh, uh, for about 15, 15, years. 15 years at the Greek Orthodox Church. We've, and the amazing thing about this is, we've sort of been excavating all of Nazareth, uh, starting with the Greek Orthodox area and then moving to the Roman Catholic area. And iconic places. We've been working at Mary's Well, we've been working at the bathhouse next door, the uh, Greek Orthodox Church of the Annunciation, Mary's Cave, then we're working in an area right adjacent to the Basilica, the Roman Catholic Basilica, of, uh, which is another Church of the Annunciation. There are two churches of the Annunciation in Nazareth. There's the Greek Orthodox and the Roman Catholic. So what we discovered at the Greek Orthodox, which really is the, the great story is that we discovered one day while working the original floor of the Greek Orthodox Church of the Annunciation that was six feet below the present church. And the bishop came and says, we must excavate this. And we uh, actually are now excavating, we're continuing the excavations of this original part of this original episode, which is the seminal moment when the angel Gabriel comes to Mary, mother of Jesus, and says, You're Hail Mary, full of grace, you are going to have the child. So how do you know, so that happened at Mary's well? Mary's well. As an archeologist, what kind of evidence can ah. you can you show me that says that the that uh, the the archangel Gabriel came to Mary here? Well, first of all, when when we're talking about uh, uh, episodes like this, this is not a newspaper. This is a, a literary event uh, that is recorded after the fact. But most importantly, is we try to provide the background. Is there a well in uh, Nazareth that goes back to the first century? Was, does this well contain artifacts that are consistent with that time period? So we found coins and we found glass and we found ceramics and the things that you find that give it the, the background of this first century. But, how, but can you tell me that the Archangel Gabriel came? You know, those are the kinds of things that you can't. The encounter was a private encounter between Mary and the Angel uh, uh, Gabriel. But you can tell me that this was a well. Right. And, that and we, you we can, can tell. We can tell you it's a first century well in the right place, in the right time period, and then to discover a church which is built uh, four centuries later, which is, okay, it's not exactly the, the, the same time period. It means that people were maintaining an oral tradition that went on for three, four hundred years about this place being a sacred place. And you could give evidence to the oral tradition. We can give evidence to the background of that oral tradition. But Nazareth is one of those unique places, I have to say. It's mentioned 23 times in the New Testament, yet it's not mentioned in any other text in, the, in that same time period. So a lot of people said, well, did this city really exist? Or whether this was um, manufactured by the writers of the Gospels? This is what archaeology can do. Archaeology can settle those kinds of disputes that Nazareth was a real place that had a real population in the first century that may have been centered around this massive well. Right. And those are the kinds of things that I think 
that when you hear a story about the angel Gabriel meeting Mary at the well, it gives it authenticity. It's not just something that somewhere it happened. It gives it a specific location. And being able to excavate a place like that is, I think, for me and my colleagues. It's fantastic. Uh, and, and look, we're at the University of Hartford, and we go and we find a place like this, which brings, I think, the fact that doing a piece like this of the Annunciation here in Hartford makes it doubly important. The uh, Greek Orthodox Church is, the, we think, is the place of Mary's well. What about the Roman Catholic Church? So the Roman what Catholic, happened there? So the, actually, if you, in some of the different accounts of the Annunciation, Mary has two Annunciations. The first Annunciation takes place at the well. The Annunciation means the announcement. announcement that's just right. in case people did. Right. The right. birth announcement uh, of Jesus' birth. Right. So the first one takes place at the well, which is very unique. Uh, she's out there getting water because everybody had to get water. They have water in their homes. And then she goes home. And again, the, uh, the angel Gabriel comes to her and says, You hail Mary full of grace, you are going to have a child. Did you get the first announcement? And so you have two parallel announcements. So the Roman Catholic Church is built in the second location, in her home, the home of Mary and Joseph. And it's like a, a cave that's inside of the church. And how do you give authenticity to the fact that this is her home? Well, this is what the tradition uh, states. You see, when you have a tradition that goes back 1,500 years, and you have artifacts that uh, verify the 1,500-year-old tradition, and it's 400 years set back from the obvious, the original event. That's where archaeology can say, it goes back to the 5, uh, 1,500 years, that's a pretty good tradition. But it could be what we call relic churches, churches that are uh, giving a sacred place to an event that is very important for the local population. And the fact that the, these two locations are sanctified by churches that were built in the Byzantine period, meaning 1,500 years ago, is a pretty good tradition, is a pretty good tradition. So as far as the concert is concerned, tell me what else is gonna go happen. Well, I have um, to make sure, if you come to the church, you can come to the church until April 30th, there is an exhibit of the entire excavation work that we've been doing in Nazareth. And that's going to take place at yes. Asylum Hill Congregate, right. am I correct? That is correct. In, uh, in our large parish hall, which is adjacent to the sanctuary, uh, there is a wonderful exhibit of photos that Richard has provided, um, I believe about 18. Um, and they detail everything that's going on uh, and the, the different discoveries that have been made and the interior of the churches and specific dig spots as well. Um, that exhibit went up on March 25th, which is the Feast of the Annunciation well, that date. Is the, that is the date <clears throat> that the Archangel Gabriel came mm -hmm. to Mary the first time. That's right. And if you count, nine, nine months, months later, later is December 25, mm -hmm. and we right. have the birth of Jesus. Right. Yes. So that exhibit will be up through the end of April. On the Monday before the concert on the 16th, the second part of this whole event is a lecture that Richard is going to be giving as part of his President's College Series lecture that he is doing right now. And is that open to the public? Open to the public. April 16th from 4 to 5.30. If you show up and you, <laughs> you can get in, then you can uh, uh, learn about not only the aspects of our own excavation, but about Nazareth and then about the, uh, the Annunciation, a little bit about uh, our own uh, ongoing excavations, what we're going to be doing next year in uh, the Nazareth excavations. But you'll also he uh, hear a little bit about what the music is going to be on the 23rd, on 22nd, because the 22nd is going to be, the I con think, the concert. It seems like rather a large uh, project. Right. Is there someone else sponsoring this besides Asylum Hill Congregation and the Maurice Greenberg Society? I want to make sure 
that I say the uh, Board of Advisors of the College of Arts and Sciences, who have been big supporters uh, of the excavations, are also the uh, sponsors for, one of the sponsors for uh, the concert itself. Any other sponsors? Well, the, the, the main sponsor from Asylum Hill is the Music for Humanity concert series, which is an, uh, an endowed series uh, based on a wonderful gift given by John and Edie Murphy. Um, so all costs with the concert are completely covered and therefore all ticket proceeds go to benefit an agency for this specific concert. It is going to be Habitat for Humanity. But uh, there are also some other hands involved in this. I felt like it was important to try to bring in the uh, Roman Catholic Church involved in this as well. So we have invited the choir from the Cathedral of St. Joseph right across the street from us. So their choir and the choir of Asylum Hill will be combining forces. So it's forces. a huge show. Yes. It's a very, very big show. And what about your lecture? Is there a fee for that, Richard? No, on April 16th, if you come to the church mm -hmm. and there is a seat for you, it's free and open to the public. So April 16th, 4 p.m. at 814 Asylum. Okay, I want to make sure that everybody realizes mm -hmm. where the Asylum Hill Congregational Church is located uh, in the social hall. Uh, how many seats do we have? Well, we can probably comfortably fit 120. So be one of the lucky ones to learn about this. And uh, then they'll be prepared to come on the 22nd at 4 p.m. to actually hear the Annunciation, and then they'll understand what the Annunciation is all about. Well, the church's website, which is where a ticket and other information about all of these events that we've been talking about is www.ahcc.org. Mm -hmm. And there is a music and arts tab that you can click on, and the concert series is all listed right there. This is the last of four concerts in our Music for Humanity concert series. I mean, this is so exciting that this is happening in Hartford. Can you tell me, is this happening somewhere else also? Because I'm thinking, what a waste uh, just to have... Well, uh, I, I, should, I should say, it is premiering first at the University of Nebraska in Lincoln on April 17th. It is then moving where the East Coast premiere is going to be at Asylum Hill Congregational Church. And then on May 12th, it's going to be at the Met in New York City. So, I mean, three places, but we hope that this kind of a piece is going to appear in the um, churches throughout the world. Because it's, as you're going to see, it has so many different uh, aspects to it. The chanting, the, the modernity, the, the, the music that I, I think it might become a classic. And this is Philip Glass. This is Philip, Philip Glass. Philip Glass is now 81 years old. 81. A nice Jewish boy. He's done a lot of things yeah. uh, with a lot of Jewish people. Yes. Doesn't seem to make a difference when you're a musician, when you're a composer. Right. In terms of the choral compositions, I want to say one of the pieces that we are doing uh, is called The Annunciation by uh, Massachusetts-based composer Kevin Siegfried. Uh, and I contacted Kevin to say, we're doing this piece of yours, um, and it's happening at this particular event featuring the East Coast premiere of this piano quintet by Philip Glass. And he was just tickled pink that, um, uh, that his piece would be included in an event such as this. Um, and actually he said, you know, I, I have great respect for, for what Philip Glass has done as a composer, and so I'm very excited to be a part of that. Well, I think everybody's excited. I mean, this is, it's a world, it's a world-class event. It's a great event cultural event for Happening Hartford. in yes. Hartford, happening in Hartford. And you made it happen, both of you. I've been talking to Dr. Richard Freund from the Maurice Greenberg Center for Judaic Studies at University of Hartford, and also Jack Pott, the, uh, the musical director of the Asylum Hill Congregational Church, and they've assembled a world-class event in Hartford uh, featuring uh, Philip Glass, Chiara String Quartet, plus there's the Asylum Hill Congregational Choir, and also the St. Joseph's, uh, Joseph's Choir from across the street. It's going to be a bang-up concert Everyone is invited. Tickets are available on the website April 22nd. On April 16th, we have Dr. Richard Freund talking about his arche the archaeological digs in Nazareth. You're going to learn a lot, as he called himself. A nice Jewish boy is going to teach you all about uh, the birth of Jesus, Mary's well, uh, Church of the Annunciation, 
a few churches of Annunciation, be there.